Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're back on this 2023 Ford Bronco and we're gonna be installing that Red Arc Tow Pro Elite. So uh, let's just go ahead, we're just gonna jump right in and I'm gonna show you the parts we're using. Now this is a base model, so it did not come with a factory tow package. Uh, what we did was we went to Ford and we just bought this genuine Ford accessory and you can see here uh, VM2DZ-2C006-A, right? Um, that's a big product number. I'll put it down in the description. Whenever you purchase a new vehicle from Ford, they give you those Ford points and you are able to either use those for service or accessories. And in this case, we went with the accessories here and this entire Red Art kit was purchased for about $98. So uh, what this one does is it comes with the genuine Ford pigtail. So this is going to plug directly into the harness uh, that will plug into our actual trailer brake controller here. And we have this harness here that goes from the trailer brake controller to the actual control knob uh, that we're gonna mount somewhere on the dash. So all of these come just like Red Arc would send it. The only difference is that through Red Arc, we would have had to buy this separately. So uh, that's why we went this route. Now, coming into the Bronco, if you come right under this dash, you can see this is the plug that we're going to be looking for. This is what we're going to be plugging everything in. We're probably going to be mounting the module up underneath here somewhere. The real question is, where do we want to put the controller knob? So uh, we are thinking either here or here. I got to get on the backside and see what's going on. The other option that you could do is I've seen people uh, add them right here. The problem is, is when you push in on the knob, it activates your trailer brakes. And the last thing you want to be doing is towing down the road and accidentally drop something or get something up against it and activate that when you're not wanting to. More than likely, we are going to be coming right in here next to the switch. Now, another thing, if for some reason this doesn't work out, knee hits it here, I don't really like the location, all you really have to do is buy this new bezel and uh, you no longer have that hole there. So you could drill into something down here in one of these spots, but again, you're in the same situation to where it's a big expensive panel compared to a little panel and all the other lights and everything are already here. So it's a pretty convenient spot. So to access this area, we are gonna be dropping down this lower uh, panel here below the steering wheel. And uh, this should just pop right out. But to do that, we've got a few tools I wanna show you. So I went ahead and purchased this kit here on Amazon, and this is the Trisalto Pro Tools Auto Trim Removal Kit. Uh, it actually comes with 12 tools. It wasn't too expensive. I'll throw the link down in the description. It's got that little rivet puller that um, I had in my last video, and it's got all of these hard plastic body panel tools that'll do a good job of popping any of those panels off that you might need without marring or scratching or you know messing up any of uh, the things like a flathead screwdriver or a uh, pocket knife would, right? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use these. I'm going to use probably this one here to pop off the panel on the inside. This is another great one, right? It's got a good little pry and uh, just a little bit of an offset. So uh, that should do a good job too. All right, and there it is. Now, looking at the back panel of the switch, you can see we've got a small gap here, maybe about the width of my finger. And then over on this side, it's just a little bit bigger. So I think we're gonna mount that on this side here. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna remove this switch here. So squeeze it in on this tab, pulling that out. And then this has some little tabs here, All right? So just squeeze it in on the tabs on the side here, slowly pushing that out. Now we have this whole piece out. We're going to go take this on the table so that we can actually, uh, you know, get to work on it. So we have the bezel here. And so that I'm not going to be marking up on the front of this, I'm going to just take a piece of masking tape and just tape this on here, line it up with that edge there. And then I'm just going to run my thumbnail in here, 
get my grooves going so I can see exactly what I have. Right, and as I mark this up, if I don't like what I want, I pull the masking tape off and I start over. So now that we've got that masked up, I went ahead and put this in some soft jaws so that I can put some pressure on it when I'm drilling it. And we're going to figure out what the center is. So just using a ruler here, it looks like we are about one and three eighths. I would say almost eh, exactly one and three eighths uh, between those two grooves that way. And we are ooh, uh, close enough. That's like, it's like 15 sixteenths or something. Now that was an inch and three eighths. So you would think that these two buttons here also line up and those are gonna be uh, pretty dead center. And then doing the math, one and three eighths, uh, cutting that in half, that becomes 11 sixteenths. And I went ahead and marked 11 sixteenths on a ruler. I don't know if you can see it there, but uh, it lines up perfectly with the middle. So I'm just gonna come over here now to this edge bezel, get my other side. Right, and now I can just come across from that center line there and the line that I just made. And you can see how that works out. So now we're gonna come back across. Uh, I said 15 16 so that becomes what, 15, 30 seconds. Luckily this ruler, I can flip it around and I have 30 seconds on side and I'm just gonna count 15 of these little tiny lines. All right, and so here we're coming in, like I said, 15 of those tiny lines. And just to check center, I just measured from that side. Now I will measure from this side and see if we line up. And we do. And so all of our lines line up. We're right here pretty dead center. Now it's time, uh, you know, to never go back. Also, if you like this pencil, this is a Pika Dry pencil, right? This is a great little mechanical uh, work pencil that I've been using. So you can check that out down below. So we drilled some test pieces and uh, what we found out was uh, 3 8 was just a little too tight and the next step past that was just a little too loose. So we're gonna stop here at the 3 8 and then go from there to get our knob, uh, you know, positioned perfectly in there. So here it is, went ahead, cleaned up the burrs on the back and look at this, come on. Oh, like it was built for it, nice. And if you decide to mount this in a different place than what we did, maybe in the center console, in the dash or something, uh, this is the bezel that comes with that. Uh, we didn't need it, so we're just going to toss this in our parts bin, maybe we'll use it on something else. So we're gonna go ahead, here's our little control knob that we're gonna put on the back side. We just wanna remember that this side is up. And uh, you can see that, what that looks like on the back side. So again, we're gonna line everything in the back here. Make sure that we've got that aligned and centered. All right, twist our knob all the way to the left. That way, our zero lines right up at the top. And so there we have it. And we're just gonna tighten this up very slowly, because everything is plastic. So you want it to bite on the back side because you don't want this twisting as you try to twist that knob. The good thing is the knob doesn't have very much resistance. So you can see here that this knob has, you know, many, many settings, but it also pulls off and you can align this uh, how you needed it. So just make sure you get the zero straight up and down, turned all the way to the left, and then you're good to go. All right, so we're gonna take our light switch here. We're gonna put this back into this little swing down panel. So again, this just presses in here Right, locks into place, make sure you plug it back in. And we're thinking of mounting our control module on the back side of this little steel plate. So we're gonna take this off just to look at it, just to see the best way of doing that. Just an eight millimeter socket and it takes you, you know, 10 seconds with a little 
zip gun here. So this is the position that it's in back here. And we're thinking of mounting that like that. It's almost perfect. Now we have two options. We can use double-sided tape and stick that. And uh, you know, maybe that works best. Or we can put this little soft rubber thing on the back side here so that it's not sliding around and stuff and then run some zip ties around it. So I don't know, I'm gonna think about that for a second. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're just gonna acetone this down because we've decided just to take this little foam pad, we're gonna stick it here and we're going to zip tie this into place. All right, so just coming in here with our zip ties now. We made sure to uh, point this in the direction. So this is going to go to our uh, main wiring harness. This is going to go to our control knob that we just put in next to that light switch. So this one's pointing in this direction, this one's pointing in that direction. It'll keep everything nice and organized. So there it is, all nice and snug, not going anywhere. So we're gonna take our harness. This one's going to the controller knob. We're gonna plug this one in. Make sure you hear that snap and then check it. And then here's our other one here that's going to plug into this side. Right, and we're just gonna take these and uh, coil them up nice and neat. Make sure that we only have the lengths we need and uh, put this back into place. All right, so make sure you just route your wire so that you can get this all back up in there. So this one's gonna come up and over this little support beam and the other one is going back up in there. So we got everything mounted back there, everything was plugged in, so we no longer needed access to the back side of this panel. So we're just gonna lock this back into place so that we can come down here and this is gonna plug into the Ford factory wiring harness. So here's our factory harness, and we're just gonna pull this off of that tab that's in here. And using our other little trim tool here, we're gonna get back up underneath here. Pop that guy off. Here's a cover that Ford put on there that we do not need. And the wiring harness plugs right in and that will go right back into that. We're just gonna roll this up right here, get it up out of our way, zip tie it and tug it back up in behind this panel. So in my previous video, uh, we ran that blue wire that went from the back coming up here to the trailer brake controller and we're going to have to pull that through the firewall. Now that little grommet right there is where we're planning on coming through the firewall. So we're gonna come through there and then we're going to tie in on the aftermarket harness side of that blue wire. So that's going to uh, control our trailer brakes and go all the way back to our seven pin uh, that we installed in my previous video. So we're just gonna come up, we're gonna pull this guy out so that we can poke a hole through it and run our wire that way. So here's a blue wire I was telling you about that we ran in a previous video. You can check that out uh, down below. And here's that grommet. So we're just gonna come in, nothing, nothing too difficult, but we're just gonna stab a hole in here. Try to keep it right in the center. There we go. And we're not drilling this out, instead we're poking it. That way when you put the wire through, it's still a nice solid seal. And so what I'm gonna do to make life easier is now I'm going to install the grommet this way. So this will be on the outside and this will now be on the inside. That way I don't have to fight with that wire down up underneath the dash. All right, so get that back down where that's gonna go. And then we'll pull that through. So there it is going through the firewall. We'll just get this up out of the way up over here. Here's our harness for the flat toe, which is gonna be another video. And that'll just kind of go back up on itself, back around out of here, out of the way. Hopefully you can see this, but you're gonna wanna run your blue wire up out of the way. And we're actually just going to uh, cut and splice and tie into this one right here. So I'm gonna come down just a little bit so that if I ever wanna tie back into this, I can. 
uh, and then I'm going to be connecting these with just a couple of, uh, you know, insulated spade connectors. So those will go on there and then uh, we'll crimp those and just tie everything up out of the way. All right, I went ahead and did a little more finagling. Got the wire up where I wanted it. Got everything going how I like it. Finished crimping these on. And then this just plugs into that other one. Again, get that up out of the way. There we go. And there it is, not too difficult. Uh, you can check out those other videos to see how I ran the wires from the back up to the front. Um, we did some voltage tests and everything checks out. And I think we're good to go. So if it helped you, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe. All right, everybody. I just wanna say thanks for watching. And uh, if you really liked it, hit that super thanks. And as always, I'll catch you on the next video.